This is the Bible Protector Ministry. My name is Matthew Vashua. I want to talk today about resisting and coming against the ideas of Alexander Dugan. Matthew Vashua versus Alexander Dugan. This is me, Matthew Vashua. King James Bible is what I stand for and Word of Faith Doctrine is what I believe. If I bring those two together, and when you bring it together, they come in what Smith Wigglesworth showed as a word and spirit movement. And we need that. We need to have church restitution. We need to have Christianity coming into acceptance, into uh, impacting the world. And we need to see it on a national level restore the Commonwealth. I run the Bible Protector website, and on that website, you can see the research I've done into the King James Bible and into its accuracy, into its history, in through its uh, editions and through to today. Also many other things on that website. And one particular thing I want to point out is a book about multiple fulfillments of Bible prophecy. And it shows how the Bible uh, has predictions in it that have come to pass, that are coming to pass, and therefore must come to pass. Today we're talking about Alexander Dugan and uh, Sheikh Imran Hussein. And here we're seeing Alexander Dugan, a Russian professor who is a political theorist. And uh, he has some ideas which I think are very bad and uh, which also are interesting to look at. And we want to see the uh, opposition between what we're standing for, what I'm believing, and what he is pushing. He is uh, viewing the world in uh, his way, talking about geopolitics, and uh, he calls it uh, Eurasianism. Basically, what it means is the rise of a Russian empire. And underneath this um, new Russian empire, you have uh, Islam uh, underneath with it as one of the confederates. That's his idea, which um, has as an enemy the West and Western liberalism. And, of course, with that, Protestantism. Well, these ideas, or this, this sort of view of the world, seems to match exactly with what the Bible talks about in uh, the prophecies about uh, Gog in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, also what it talks about in other parts of Daniel. And in uh, Alexander Dugan's book called The Fourth Political Theory, which is his made-up theory, uh, he talks about um, restoring back basically a return to theology and uh, he's saying he wants to come against the enlightenment uh, he wants to come against modernity against liberalism and uh, he's inventing this fourth political theory uh, coming beyond uh, western liberalism coming beyond uh, marxism or, or communism socialism coming beyond nazism fascism to his fourth made-up political theory which, of course, is promoting Russia as a world-dominating power with these other powers underneath it. So, on the left-hand side, Dugan and his views. On the right-hand side, my views and uh, showing the contrast between them. He's standing for a revived Eastern Orthodox Empire, that is to say, uh, the Byzantine Empire in its Russian form, centered on Russia, uh, whereas I'm standing for an Anglo-American, Protestant-influenced, restored Commonwealth, centered on Australia and New Zealand. He claims the rejection of the Enlightenment or modernity or liberalism, yet hypocr uh, with hypocrisy um, because he actually is using philosophy, anthropology and sociology, whatever, which are derived from people, those ideas that he's bringing together, which come from the Enlightenment. Uh, I'm rejecting the Enlightenment in as much as or in regards to its rejection of you know, Christianity against um, its view of the Bible, against its view, its anti-supernatural view. So I stand for the Bible and for the Holy Ghost. So we can use terminology, but it seems that it has vastly different meanings then, seeming similar, yet uh, very far apart. He stands for Eurasianism, uh, which is the geopolitical view of um, I guess the uh, world pivot and the center of land mass in uh, Eastern Europe, Russia, basically. Um, you can see it with the Russian Empire, you can see it with the USSR, um, 
that kind of idea of expanding power out of Russia. On the other side to that, in opposition to that, um, I stand for Pacific Union, which is saying that in Australia and New Zealand, um, we should see a rise of a, of a uh, proper kind of uh, belief system, that is Christianity, and uh, that from, from that sphere of, of the world trade and uh, exporting of, of proper ideas. Uh, this is the difference between, uh, on the left there, anti-Western liberalism, and yet similar but different, and uh, my view being anti-modern infidelity, that is, the things of the Enlightenment which go against Christianity, that is, Bible-believing Protestantism, must be rejected. We both identify an East-West difference, although he's wanting to promote the East, but uh, whereas the actual uh, rising progress, I think, is of Christianity coming into the East because of the fall of Eastern Antichrist in the near future. I'll explain that. So in the Western Roman Empire, um, that, that the Roman Empire proper has come through three forms. First, the historical Roman Empire, pagan Roman Empire, was taken over by Christianity. And so that was the pagan era, and then under Constantine converted to Christianity. Uh, the second phase, or the next period of uh, the Western Roman world, then, of course, was the papal or Roman Catholic world, and that was overtaken by Protestantism. And the third phase we're in now since particularly the French Revolution and particularly more directly since 1801 with Napoleon Bonaparte um, is uh, the infidel period and uh, when he made that deal with the, the papacy in 1801 was basically um, the, new, the new era was now in full effect. Um, we are seeing, therefore, that there must be something that's going to come against infidelity. Bible prophecies point against, uh, point to an end, something coming against infidelity, and it's, of course, God's truth. And uh, we believe in Christian revival, in, in the advance of biblical truth in the latter days, which is what we uh, are expecting to see. Well, on the eastern side of the Roman Empire, that's gone through three stages. Historically, basically, it's the Greek world or the Hellenistic world. And the first um, particular Eastern Antichrist um, was, uh, which is just talked about in Daniel chapter 8, um, the first Eastern Antichrist, if you interpret Daniel 8 in the preterist mode of interpreting, um, was talking about the Maccabean period of time, which was Antiochus Epiphanes and, and the uh, Maccabeans. Uh, the second period or second fulfillment of the prophecy is the historical long-term fulfillment with Islam, Muhammad, Islam, and so forth. And that's a historical, that's a historical or historicist Eastern Antichrist. And then the third historical and coming into the future um, and specific um, uh, literal or or uh, condensed to one particular person and literal fulfillments in a nation and through you know world events, basically World War III, um, if, if we can see it in the current time frame, um, would be a, a rising Russian leader named Gog as the final Eastern Antichrist. So the battle between the Eastern Antichrist and Christianity, or against truth, uh, against the ideology of holding for the Word of God, the King James Bible, and holding for uh, the work of the Spirit, Word of Faith doctrine, um, that that battle is is about to to be done. And that's different, but you see the the inroads against the Western sphere as well with that. Now, ultimately, uh, there's a different battle in the West um, because. Uh, there are not three, uh, we're not talking about three specific Western Antichrists, we're just talking about three eras in the West, um, and the current era in the West is the infidel era, but we're not talking about any specific infidel Antichrist at this time, although there will be a final Western Antichrist who will be um, a false, some kind of false Christian slash military slash, uh, as I say, religious uh, leader of Europe in, in the future, uh, but that's after the translation of the saints, so that's the future or futurist fulfillment of prophecy. But we're talking mainly in line with the historicist view 
and uh, specifically in the eastern half of the fulfillments of the prophecy. And so we're seeing really it's, it's a Russia versus us type scenario um, coming out of uh, the great game historically, um, which was Britain versus Russia coming out of the Cold War, which was America versus Russia, um, and uh, now coming to that the truth of Christianity must rise. Now, the way Dugan is presenting his viewpoint is that he's saying in the East there's going to be this um, ruling power, Russia, or the Russian Orthodox Byzantium um, revived kind of empire. And uh, he wants then with him in this, this rectangle of his confederacy um, or this idea is uh, Islam and other confederates. And he's pointing at the West in his philosophy and whoever this Gog figure is, um, we're not clear on that yet, but Dugan's way is certainly seeming to be pointing on that very trend. Um, he, he's saying, um, you know, the Western modernism, Western liberalism, that, that's the enemy, and Christianity, uh, particularly Anglo-Saxon Protestantism, that's there sort of with that. So the West is the enemy, basically. So Protestantism is the enemy as much as liberalism, um, decadence or whatever. Um, that's all the enemy just as much as uh, Islam and, and with him is good, or with them on their side is good. Well, that's, that's um, of course, uh, an erroneous view of the world, but uh, it does, does show an understanding of, of the reality of what the Bible prophecies point out. In reality... Yes, there is a liberalism or modern infidelity in the West, and it's a major uh, post-religious type of arrangement. You can also see false Christianity in the West, you know, Roman Catholicism, and then ecumenism, and you know, uh, Protestantism that's that's off the track. But there is true Bible-believing Christians in the West, or in that, in you know, in in the world today, basically what's called the West. And uh, that's that's an identity that we hold to, that we are true Christians despite error around us. So on the left-hand side, Dugan's view and contrasting on my side, uh, on the right-hand side. So Dugan talks about ideologies, plural. I talk about, uh, uh, sorry, about, uh, es well, he does talk about ideologies, but he's talking about eschatologies, that's last day's events or coming to the end of particular views such as um, Islamic eschatology. Um, whereas I talk about one specific eschatology, and that is the multiple fulfillments of Bible prophecy eschatology, which has in it a Eastern coming to its end phase, and then in the future a Western phase, which is um, somewhat irrelevant to our discussion here, because we're talking against Dugan and his views, um, which really has not so much to do with the Western Antichrist or anything like that at all, but is about the fall of Eastern powers and about the rise of Christianity um, because of that and through that method and through that way, the way um, from the east. Um, so Syria, for example, in Dugan, he, he can look at uh, Sheikh Hussein and see, well, you know, the, the Muslims say something about Syria in their last days scenario in, in that view. Well, you know, the Bible in Isaiah chapter 17, it talks about Damascus and it talks about, um, obviously, in that respect, some events in Syria. Now these are two separate eschatologies but somehow um, what they are expecting and what we expect according to what God has said in the Bible um, there's some similarity but then some great differences too. The thing is who's going to win? What, who's right? What's right? He talks about, Dugan talks about multipolarity and really that that's just meaning he doesn't want there to be one um, culture dominating on the planet Earth, i.e., America, and and certainly not um, liberalism. Well, I'm against you know Western liberalism, as in Western infidelity. That's certainly a bad thing. To reject Christianity as um, Western um, modern infidelity does is an evil thing. Um, however, that spirit of error, that spirit of antichrist, that is evident in the West. Um, should not be, and this is the whole foolishness of the whole thing, is you don't have an Eastern Antichrist rise, well, I'm going to fight against that Western Antichrist, and then, well, I mustn't be anti an Antichrist to fight against that. Um, um, but in reality, what it is, is that God is in control, and that Christianity must win, ultimately, 
and that the Eastern Antichrist itself must come to an end, and that Christianity must have inroads against this Western, um, you know, uh, infidel ideology of of humanism, secularism, atheism, and all this. So that could be called Christian exceptionalism, meaning there's, um, you know, having a specific doctrine, having absolute truth rather than saying oh well we can accommodate many truths together which is what Dugan's trying to do because he's including Islam whereas I'm saying well there's only one true actual absolute truth proper doctrine and that's a series of correct doctrines under proper Christianity um, that that's the only way um, so he's saying well he's anti-american hegemony whereas Obviously, we're pro-USA, and he's pro-Russian, whereas we're anti-Russian belligerents. In other words, this is coming down to a, a conflict, and that um, looks like it's pointing to a Third World War-type scenario. Um, of course, Russia versus America um, is, is uh, you know, that, that's what it looks like. Uh, Dugan in, talks about Rome, the Roman Empire, and this is based also on Sheikh Hussein's sort of um, method of, of viewing things, Byzantium, the Byzantine uh, Eastern um, Empire. Well, that went to 1453, and then Russia became the third Rome, basically. Um, and also underneath that, uh, Islam together. And one of their aims is to retake Constantinople. Now, I say that's the way of Eastern Antichrist, the way of Gog. So I am suggesting if, if that is... Um, what Dugan really is in line with, which it seems he is, then coming against Egypt would be part of that ongoing um, chain of events. Um, it would definitely be a sign, because that's what Bible prophecy says about Egypt. So comparing Dugan's so-called theology versus my uh, godly belief in the Godhead, that is, you know, the Trinity, uh, Jehovah, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We um, who are Protestants, and uh, there are even Roman Catholics who confess that, and Eastern Orthodox people who confess that um, belief in the Trinity. But Dugan talks about this God of light, and this sort of coming from, who knows, the the power of the sun or somewhere, some thing coming down to from the top downwards um, to man. Well, that sounds kind of esoteric and strange. Um, reminds me of uh, some kind of Mundelfari uh, <laughs> beliefs, um, sort of like what Henrik Himmler um, was believing um, with his Nazi doctrines and all this. And uh, that seems to align with what the Bible talks about, the God of forces, in Daniel chapter 11. And you can even see um, hints toward that in Russian Eastern Orthodox iconography um, with their um, solar disks behind the head of the, in this case, picture of Michael the Archangel in their icons. Um, so the God of forces, what's that really, what forces are we talking about? Well, Dugan himself is inventing his fourth political theory. Um that in itself is the force of will, is the force of seeing stuff around from history of tradition, saying um, there's a force of tradition and then there's a force of authority, that is, that it comes from the top down. So the force of tradition, the force of authority are to be harnessed and then you know one individual can um, do these things, um, basically create a, a philosophy and create a nationalism um, or a... Uh, you know, an imperium, a way of of ruling outwards. Um, so, so these these things seem to align uh, in that way. Uh, on the other side, there you can see I mentioned presidentary powers, which are spiritual authorities or powers. They're angels also fighting against um, principalities and powers in the spirit. We know that in the New Testament, Christ's power actually is predominant. That's why Christianity could take over the Roman Empire for a period of time. Um, because because of this um, New Testament period where Jesus Christ actually has the power and the spirit um, on the planet Earth. But it also means that all events and all phenomena, all entities um, in the physical universe must have um, some kind of spiritual um, angel or angelical um, attachment behind them. 
and that means like the sun there's an angel of the sun and each human being has a guardian angel things like that and then how times and seasons are changed is as we see in the old testament in daniel um there's a prince of persia but then the the archangel is fighting against that or the angel is fighting against the the prince of persia we can see the uh, the power to move events in the earth um really indicates that uh what happens in the spirit is how uh, kingdoms rise and fall in the natural. So what happens in the spirit um, is followed by what happens in the natural, and what happens in the natural is a reflection of the spirit or the spiritual. We see divine providence, and God is, of course, sovereign, and he is um, superintending over time, over events. Um, but in this, you can see that he provides things, he brings things to pass as he promised. There's spiritual laws at work, one of which is uh, sowing and reaping, for example. So there are times and seasons. So nothing is just uh, able to stay um, established that's wrong, but there's times when things are cast down and other things are raised up. There's this cycle. So in that sense, there are forces at work, but these are forces of the spirit, forces of the truth, forces of God and God's control, not some kind of you know human centric forces based on whole wrong ideas as we see in Dugan's philosophy okay so basically it seems to me that there's four areas impacting or that he's taking from um, which are uh, theosophy esotericism and neo fascism uh, Nazi fascism uh, which is um, you know the uh, the esoteric sort of ideas um, it's taken from Islamic eschatology or es Islamic, uh, I wouldn't just say eschatology, but interpretation of Sheikh Hussein, for example, is influential in that respect from sciences such as uh, various uh, anthropologists and political scientists and so forth. Is a, is a, those schools collectively um, or those areas? And this is the hypocrisy of it. Um, if you say you're against modernism or modernity, against liberalism, why would you be going to people who themselves are influenced by the Enlightenment? It, it's contradictory, but this is what Dugan actually is doing. So there's inherent contradictions in that. Also claiming and saying he's an Eastern Orthodoxy old believer and wanting to revive um, you know, Byzantium, basically, in Russia, a Russian Byzantium um, empire, Eastern Russian Empire, Eastern uh, Roman Empire in Russia um, is is not going to be in line with traditional you know beliefs that that uh, might have been there um, in in the earlier centuries, but really we can see um, through these different influences is actually a new form of religion and it's a self-made religion. My views very briefly are of course. Uh, Anglo-American Protestantism um, distilled or in that um, two lines one is a King James Bible belief what King James Bible is, is a perfect and, and proper Bible to be used and also word of faith should be uh, uh, the doctrines that, that are believed um, combined together to a word and spirit viewpoint um, and and that means a church restitution into the earth um, also, uh, a view that God has specifically used the English nation. Um, God raises up certain people and for certain purposes, and he's and he's used English language and those types of things. Um, you can see God used them for missionary uh, uses, etc., etc. Um, so there's two lines in that, which is the British Empire and the U.S. hegemony, um, and then that comes together in the Westminster system. In Australia, or the Australian nation basically derives input from those two lines, both directly from the British Empire in a direct line and also with great influence from the USA. And in fact, pretty much now is, is uh, being influenced by the USA as the primary influence and not uh, Britain anymore. And then from that, get to Pacific Union, which is basically just saying Australia, New Zealand, uh, and, and other um, neighbouring areas part of um, a collective and also 
um, you want the influence, and that's what we want to believe for is the influence of Christian, you know, basically have a Christian revival, have the influence of Christianity into um, that, and we could call that the restoration of the Commonwealth. So we can therefore see two very different world views. Dugan is saying he's against the Enlightenment, he's, a, he's against Anglo-Saxon Protestantism, he's against Anglo-Saxon liberalism, but I'm saying, well, he's actually following people who derive their views from the Enlightenment and also, very importantly, all Protestants are not liberal or modernist, as in um, not of infidelity. The, the true reformation of, of Christianity, of um, you know Protestant doctrine, came before the Enlightenment and did not lead to the Enlightenment, which is an error that some people say. Um, the Enlightenment is a totally anti-spiritual, anti-Christian movement, um, which is actually anti-Catholic um, primarily in its nature and now is is having, you know, being joined together with Catholicism because the Roman Catholic papacy has, has tried to um, hitch, hitch its wagon, as it were, to uh, modern infidelity. That's, that's their problem. And any Christian who then tries to hitch their wagon to the papacy in an ecumenical way is joining up with the same problem. And we see a lot of that going on. Um, Dugan um, basically is of a different viewpoint altogether because I'm against the Enlightenment, because I'm against all views that depart from Anglo-Protestant views of scripture. For example, I'm against the French Revolution, I'm against communism, against fascism. Well, uh, Dugan is not consistent because he's allowing influences from the Enlightenment into his view. Now, Dugan says directly that he's against um, prosperity doctrine, he's against, obviously, then, word of faith doctrine, he's against, uh, and he mentions Creflo Dollar, a preacher from America, and he calls him or implies that he's a deceiver. Source for that is a, a YouTube video called The Liberal American World Order with Professor Alexander Dugan on Jay's analysis. Well, you know, I'm for word of faith doctrine, pros prosperity doctrine, and I believe that there are good aspects and there are errors needing to be purged, uh, such as with uh, Brother Creflo Dollar. In other words, he might even be getting into heresy when he says that Jesus grew up into being the son of God or something like that. That's, well, that sounds like a heresy to me. But uh, if those things can get purged out, then I know that Brother Creflo Dollar was then, um, and for example, I heard him in person preaching on the righteousness of God, a, a wonderfully true and good sermon. And uh, he could be of the right way altogether, being having uh, wrong ideas purged out. Nevertheless, what the whole point here is, is that God is able to have a people for himself and able to get errors out of the way. Now, Dugan's talking about he wants there to be a return to uh, of or of theology. I wonder what this theology is. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem like biblical theology in, in any true sense that we know of it. Um, and therefore, I would quite easily um, imagine and and could even predict that this kind of theology of Dugan would be uh, using or would necessitate the modernistic arguments against using the Bible in English. In other words, they would fight against our idea of having the Bible in English um, and that we think it's perfect. And they'll say, oh, no, we have to have... They will say Hellenistic primacy. They will say, you know, um, Christ spoke in, uh, in Greek. It, the Bible was written in Greek. The Greek church through time had the proper scripture, basically, and now Russia is the guardian of that, and therefore we must be wrong with having the Bible in English, that it's not good enough, or we have to be in subjection to them. Also, rejection of born-again Pentecostal spiritual understanding interpretation of scripture, again, uh, as if they have, have the monopoly on that and not our way, which they are clearly against. Dugan, in an article called um, Paradigm of the End, um, argues that the final form of Protestantism is the concept of the British-Israel theory, that the Anglo-Saxons are the lost ten tribes of Israel, 
um, as if we believe that, and that the chose we believe that we're chosen race for universal world domination, and that Russia is Gog, a great enemy to be defeated. Well, he's creating a straw man, because some parts of that are correct, as in Russia is bad, um, as in that's where Gog will come from, and Gog is bad, I should say. Um, uh, that. The great enemy to be defeated is not at some final Armageddon battle, but in a, a present time of the Earth's history battle, which is the fall of Eastern Antichrist. Uh, also, whilst the Protestant and English-speaking, uh, Bible-believing Protestant view has thought, you know, that Christianity was um, well understood and being um, furthered by, um, you know, British Christians and by American Christians who spoke English, um, certainly that idea that um, somehow we're the lost ten tribes of Israel is complete nonsense, even though a few people do believe that. Um, we are not somehow um, that chosen people in that respect, but God has chosen the English-speaking nations for his purpose in respect to Gentiles being raised up as witnesses, and that's what we believe. Um, so it's nothing to do with race or to do with being identified as genetically lost ten tribes of Israel, which is an error that the identity and other such white supremacists and and uh, or people in in wrong doctrines um, may uh, hold to. Uh, that's certainly not something that we believe. But Dugan can can smear it all, and there are other um, people who use similar types of arguments. Um, that I've heard of, such as LaRouche. Now, if we turn to scripture, we can see that Dugan's ideas really seem to accord to uh, what what the Eastern Antichrist is on about and what, he, what he's doing. And I won't go through it all in detail, but in Daniel chapter 11, and uh, we, what we can see is um, an attack on, on truth, on uh, prayer. So, when the Bible says an arm shall stand on his part, that's Russia with military might, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Uh, no doubt is talking about replacing, um, coming against Christianity with, with errors. And, uh, you know, you could do a much more study in detail on that. But uh, Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. You know, this is promising us not a weak and end of Christianity, but that there should be Christian people who stand up against Eastern Antichrist um, uh, ideas, Eastern Antichrist actions. And that is to say, even in a coming Third World War, that there should be people who, who understand what's going on. In verse 33, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. So we have the ability to preach and teach. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. That's in the period of time of the final Eastern Antichrist. And uh, we could think that um, there are many Christians in America, some um, who might be, you know, they know, and it's fairly well known that... Um, this leader called Gog is to arise in Russia, and they can preach against that and say, "Well, this is, he, you know, he's bad. He's a bad man. <laughs> this is a bad thing. This is what he's going to do. This is what the Bible says, um, you know." But uh, there is persecution as well, you can see, and bad things coming against Christian people who are doing that. And I would expect that happening in America, particularly. Daniel chapter 11 verse 34 says, Now when they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. We see very much a flattery orientation towards um, uh, Christianity in this time, and almost insincere, but saying, Oh no, everyone has the right to their beliefs, and you know, no one should be uh, denigrated even if they um, say or do this. Daniel 11 verse 35 says, And some of them of understanding shall fall. So you know, some people, you know, they're going to uh, have to pay a price for standing for truth. To try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. We can see that uh, 
uh, two things are promised here really one is that there's got to be a clearing up of Christianity um, and people that are kind of right got to get fully right and uh, also we can see that God is working on a timeline and we can be assured that Eastern Antichrist is going to come to his end and it is coming to an end even if it looks like there's a great world war going or coming on and it says, and the king shall do according to his will. Now, if you interpret in the literal futurist sense of that, you can see that this is talking about Gog. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. So it's an ideological battle against Christianity. Um, the prospering part talks about putting policies into place, and you can read this in Daniel chapter 8 as well, basically policies that cause the prosperity for Russia uh, for a period of time, uh, things going well. It says, till the indignation be accomplished. Well, indignation is talking about God's divine indignation, and if you come against him and his ways at the certain set time, um, once, once someone goes to the extreme and uh, there's no coming back um, and it goes forward, well, there is divine intervention in history and this also is a sign against uh, the, the infidelity in the West that yes we actually have a God that actually exists because now you see events unfold it says for that that is determined shall be done so we can point to the Bible and say we expect this to happen we expect that to happen and when people see that come to pass it's certainly a great tool for evangelism the top part of this diagram shows an overview of world history from the start to the end and in the pink circle, these are the events, this is very simplified, not to scale, we expect to see. We expect to see Gog falling, that's the Eastern Antichrist come to its end. And that's the end of the Eastern Antichrist line. What comes in the place of that is, is um, marching and triumphant Christianity in the end times, a church restitution. And then we come to where Jesus Christ comes to take the church. And uh, that's just but a small part of of this entire part of history but an important time for Christian evangelism around the world and we want to see even Jewish people hearing the gospel properly and uh, being converted Isaiah chapter 40 and I'll start from verse 28 and then go into chapter 41 and we'll conclude with this passage hast thou not known hast thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint keep silence before me O islands and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings? He gave them as the dust to his sword, and as driven stubble to his bow. He pursued them, and passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am he. The isle saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid, drew near and came. God bless.